What's brewing, coffee lovers? Welcome to The Caffeine Show. In this episode, we're going to take a closer look at oat milks. We're going to look at this new niche grinder, and we're going to brew up some lovely new coffee we've just been sent. The first thing we're going to talk about today is oat milks. Have you been taking part in Veganuary? If you have, you've been part of 100,000 people that have pledged to take animal products out of their diet for January. We're seeing coffee shops selling more and more dairy alternatives where oat milk seems to be now pushing out the old favourites like soya and almond. We also see that Starbucks are getting in on the act and are launching their own oat milk this year. Uh, this is to sit alongside the other dairy alternatives that they provide such as almond, soya and coconut. So we want to look at our current favourite, which is Oatly, and the new kid on the block, uh, Minor Figures Oat Milk, and see how they stacked up against each other. Minor Figures, if you don't know, are an East End-based company who specialise in cold brew. They've been spending the last 12 months trying to perfect their oat milk, uh, of which they've now put into their draft cans of cold brew as well. So they have a cold brew latte and a cold brew mocha. So how does the new Minor Figures Oat Milk compare with Oatly? Well, we think they both steam up really well. Uh, you get great latte art, amazing microfoam, and they do a lot better job than some of the other milk alternatives. The texture is very similar to that of milk. Um, however, they are both lacking a little of the sweetness that you would associate with the lactose in milk. So it doesn't have quite the same mouthfeel, and also it doesn't have that luxurious, uh, creamy quality that you'll get in a really good flat white. In our opinion, they do taste slightly different. The Oatly is a little bit more dry on the palate and neither of them really work that well with brighter, fruitier coffees, you know, single estate espressos, uh, African espressos, that sort of thing. But then milk doesn't really either. But I think the oat milk just highlights the acidity a little bit too much. So in conclusion, we think that oat milk is probably one of the better dairy alternatives for us anyway. Uh, we prefer the fact that the taste is relatively neutral and the mouthfeel and texture is as most similar to milk as we've found. If you want to know what our absolute favourite is, it'll be the Nitro Mocha Cold Brew. This is absolutely fantastic. Will, please send me a case. This episode is brought to you today by the Department of Brewology Brew Method Posters. We are the official UK distributor of these posters, so snag yourself one today at our online shop. You can find them at www.caffeinemag.com forward slash shop. And the next thing we're going to talk about is this little niche grinder. Now, this has been designed by Martin Nicholson, and for the past 30 years, he's been working for people like Braun, Juliet, Tefal, Philips. Originally funded through Indiegogo, the early birds were able to pick one of these up for £350. You can still get one for just over 400 if you act quickly. And I think the full retail price on this is around 500 pounds. We still think this is a bargain though. I mean, the kind of grind you get from this is something that you wouldn't even get from a grinder of like eight or 900 pounds. One of the small gripes we have with this is the fact that it doesn't have a hopper. So you have to weigh your beans out first and then you pop them in the top here and then grind them. Now, if you're really into your coffee and you quite like that sense of occasion, then I'm sure it's absolutely fine. But for the kind of consumer who just wants to wake up, grind some coffee, put it in their machine and pull a shot, it's another level, it's another faff. One of the other features and selling points of this little grinder is the fact that it's so quiet. We measured it around 75 decibels and uh, our Baratza Sete is around 95 decibels. The thing is loud. All in all, this is a fantastic grinder. There's very low retention. It goes all the way from really super fine for espresso, single origin espresso, all the way around to drip and filter. And if you keep turning around, you can go down to cafetiere. In our final segment, we're going to taste some coffee. Uh, we've been sent this really fantastic Rwandan. Uh, this is a three-way collaboration between Always in Colour, who are a sort of lifestyle online store, uh, Exploding Bakery and Round Hill Roastery. Now, the way we're going to do this is that I asked uh, Zane from Laser Lab Projects, who I'll leave a link in his description below, to make this little brewing dice for me. Now, each of these has a different uh, icon on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll the dice and uh, find out how we're going to brew it. And it comes up AeroPress. So we're going to get our AeroPress out and we'll come back to it in a minute. You join us back here with our AeroPress paraphernalia and we've got 16 grams of coffee in the niche grinder here. 
we're going to turn this to filter drip sort of grind size and let it go. Now that's done, we are going to put it in the AeroPress. Now, as you can see, we're using the inverted method. So have the hole here and we put on our weighing scales. I'm going to put the coffee in. And we're going to tear that. We use 240 grams of water and we're going to start off with 30 grams of water and bloom. Okay, just over 30 grams of water there. I'm going to let that bloom, give it a swirl, make sure all the grinds are nice and wet. I'm going to leave that for another 15 seconds. That's now been blooming for 30 seconds and we're going to fill up the rest of the 240 grams. There we go. So we've taken our filter and we've already pre-rinsed it. We're going to put that on the top. And I'm just going to push down so we start seeing the coffee beading on the top. There we go. Leave that for a minute or so. Okay, that's now two minutes. So what we're going to do is move that to one side, turn our AeroPress over and spend 30 seconds doing a gentle push. Okay, that was just over 30 seconds, but not too bad. Let it drip. I'm going to put that to one side. Right, okay, this is probably far too hot to drink at the moment, so we're going to come back when it's a bit cooler. When it's hot, this coffee's really jammy. Um, when it cools down though, you get still get that sweetness, but you also get a tartness to it as well. It's like, um, maybe like a rhubarb tartness or uh, sort of like a yellow plum. So there's the sharpness there, but there is still sweetness in the cup as well. Yeah, it's really very good. I mean, it is quite typically Rwandan in some ways. They are the kind of flavour notes that you would expect from this kind of African coffee. Got to say, it's really nice. It's probably going to be what we're drinking all this week. This Rwandan coffee is available online through the Living in Colour website, and it's also available uh, to drink at Exploding Bakery, where they'll have it on Batch Brew. And I think you can also pick up retail bags from it there too. And that's where we're going to end this video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button. If you'd like to see more of these in the future, then hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see what we did last time, there's a screen just down over there. Click on that. Thanks very much for watching, and we hope we'll see you in the next episode.